This episode of the Seen Ved Guinsa podcast is brought to you by Solita Soap. My name is Jimmy. Jimmy. Holy shit. Is that a new fucking intro for the boy? Why did I say for the boy? I hate, I fucking hate when people, when, when, uh, when rappers say that. I feel like every rapper calls themselves the boy. They could be like fucking, I'm multitasking right now. I'm pouring a, I'm pouring a nice tall IPA at 11 at night because it's stressful times, ladies and gentlemen. COVID-19 is running wild on your ass. And there's nothing we could do about it. That's what that's what I'm going to fucking lead the podcast off with. By the way, welcome to episode 34. Is it 34 right now? It is 34. Welcome to episode 34 of the Seeing Vic Winsup podcast. Um, there's nothing you could do about this virus. Okay? I'm just going to start it off like that. Because I feel like we're forgetting that. And that's why we're panicking. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing we can do about this fucking virus, all right? We just all got, we just all got to fucking push through it. Hey, hey, woo. We just all got to push through it. That's it. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. It could be fucking worse. It could be a lot worse. I'm looking for something right now. I'm not just like fucking just just fucking staring into space. Just give me a second. Oh, right here. Oh, by the way, yeah, if you're wondering about that, if you're watching on video for whatever reason, which I realized the other day, somebody somebody asked me, they said, dude, you, they, they go, dude, you know, I don't know if they were looking for like a response from me, like if they were looking for like a reaction. By the way, yes, I'm wearing... I fucking jump all over the place. I, you guys, I don't know how I get as many streams as I do because I'm annoying as fuck and I jump all over the place. And you would think I have ADHD, but I, I wasn't diagnosed with it. So I was diagnosed with other things, but that's a story for another time. Um, I'm wearing shades again and this comfy sweater, this fuzzy, like comfortable, make me feel safe sweater because it's tough times right now. And it's an anxiety thing, and I just want to feel safe. And these shades and the and the, and the uh, and the fuzzy sweater it makes me feel safe. Uh, I said that I would hold on to this delicious Long Live Beer Works IPA, eight point five percent alcohol. So fucking tasty. I said I would hold on to this for as long as possible until I go crazy. And I feel like today I'm going a little nuts. But you know what? Guess what? We still keep it pushing. We still do the fucking podcast, right? Because the people need to fucking have a good time. And I'm not going to talk about I'm not going to talk about my life too much cuz nobody gives a fuck. I know that people are here to to have a good time. And that's why I'm here. And it's literally just <laughs> Can no virus hold me down? Mm -mm. I got to keep on potting. All right. That was a whole four minute intro of absolutely nothing. So I'm going to get to it right now. Okay. This dude fucking came up to me and was like, I don't know if he was looking for a reaction, but he goes, Hey man. You know that you don't have too many views on your YouTube, right? And I've had that said to me before, but I feel like the way this one dude said it to me, he said it to me with like a tone, and I sound like those those uh those fucking mob bosses in the Italian movies when they have like a problem with how somebody says something and when you watch the movie, you're like this thing is kind of tripping a little bit. Like the 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 Italian mob boss about what the guy's saying. The guy's not really saying anything, but it's the way he's saying it and that's how I'm taking it. Like I'm just kind of like Whoa, 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 whoa! It's not, it's not the, it's not what the fuck you said. It's how the fuck you just said it. And now, 
now I, I just wanna. This fucking IPA is gonna put me on my ass, bro. Um, he goes. You know, you don't have too many, uh, cause I guess he watches it on YouTube. He's like one of the few fucking people who do. You know, you don't have too many views on uh, YouTube, right? And I'm like, yeah, you know that not a lot of people watch podcasts. It's like more of like a listening thing. So that was funny. There's not, I'm not going on a whole tangent about it. It was just funny. I was just like, all right, bro. Like I have this friend who fucking, who asked me, he's like, yo, you know, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to tell him the same thing. But the way this dude said it, I was just kind of like that mob boss feel like I was just like, what the fuck are you saying to me? Huh? What the fuck are you trying to say? You tell me you want to, you, you, you got a message. You want to fucking spit it out. Tell me the way you want to fucking tell me. Don't hide behind this whole fucking, hey, old buddy, you don't got enough fucking views on your YouTube. I'll dig a fucking hole for you right now. Get the fuck out of here. Guys, it's like day. It's like, so it's a little dramatic, honestly. It's like day three of like fucking uh, social distancing. And I'm going to be 100. My daughter doesn't fuck with me. And I, like I said, I'm not going to fucking talk about I, one of the things that I think people fuck up with when they start podcasts is like they talk about their lives too much and shit. And if it's not relatable or if it's not something we could all laugh at, don't do it because nobody fucking cares. But my daughter doesn't fuck with me. My two year old daughter, I, I, I guarantee you, does not fuck with me. Like, I'll tell you right now, like we've been and the kid's bored. She doesn't she doesn't not fuck with me. She's my kid. She loves me. You know what I mean? But um, she doesn't fuck with me either at the same time. Like. We're going through it right now and the kid's bored. I'm fucking bored. I'm looking at her like, yo, you don't think I want to be out thotting around and shit, dude. I get time off from you, bro. I get time off from you. You think I want to fucking sit here all day and night with you just fucking bugging on me right now? And everybody's going to listen to this podcast and take my shit way too... Not everybody, but there's going to be some little weirdos who stumbled stumbled across my podcast. There's always one or two every week who stumble across it. They're like, oh, you, you serious, man? And it's like, no, dude, I do comedy. This is my thing. So when you listen to my podcast, it's kind of like that thing. Like that whole Eminem thing, dude, where it's like, if, if we really, if we really truly think that Eminem wants to kill people on his songs, like when he says he wants to like stab like uh, Kim or whatever the fuck, and we take that seriously, then maybe we should lock him up. It'd be very weird if I came on, if, if like, instead of telling my therapist that I, I, I like don't fuck with my kid, that instead I would go on a podcast and tell you guys. Get the fuck out of here. But, bro, listen, man. As parents, single parents, parenting, like, together, whatever the fuck you're doing, we all need a break. And it's not bad to want to to, to need or to want a break. And, uh, you know, me and her mother are co-parenting. We've been co-parenting successfully, you know. And... I, you know, since, since the fucking, you know, since the breakup, we've, we've split her. I have her half the week. I have her half the week. Something unfortunate happened, you know, in the last 24 hours, uh, her mother got, uh, her mother got the flu from, from her man's son. And it's a possibility. This whole shit is stupid to me, by the way, this whole, this this corona there's a lot of things that's very dumb about the coronavirus i'm gonna go on a tangent and it's probably gonna last like a half hour knowing me but i feel like the people need it um first of all she gets the flu from her man's son and then she goes to the fucking hospital for it now the kid the kid gets the flu it's confirmed that he has the flu the the test came back positive for the flu but they test him for the for the covid19 by the way covid19 Totally sounds like a fucking teen porn channel on Pornhub. All right, just saying. Don't look at me like I'm a fucking weirdo. Don't look at me like I'm I'm the fu- I'm fucked up. That's what it sounds like. 
COVID-19. It sounds like the user, the username or the channel name for teen porn on a fu- on fucking Pornhub. And it's there. I didn't make it up. Like, people watch teen porn. You know what I'm saying? But, and I mean, like, obviously, like, legal teen porn. Like, not fucking R. Kelly. Not what you say teenage. How are we talking? I'm talking, like, fucking, it probably, like, 20 and Pornhub saying they're 18 because there's creeps who are, like, oh, 18, 17-year-olds or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> That's probably how weirdos moan. I don't know. I just made it up. So, the kid got tested for COVID. They're waiting for it to come back. They did it as a as a precaution because obviously flu symptoms are the same as COVID symptoms and shit. I'm just gonna keep calling it COVID because that sounds way more funny than coronavirus. And I'm so tired of the corona memes. They're so fucking old. If I if I keep seeing people like make like when people say a corona joke, dude, I just want to take a can of Lysol and swallow it in the moment right there. I want to swallow it. I want to take a whole can of of Lysol and inhale it in that moment when people say like uh, a Corona joke that like a Corona beer, like like relating coronavirus. And it's just, it's old already. This shit's been happening since like what January that was, that was when we thought it was okay to joke about Corona. Now everybody's panicking. Funny how that happens. I wonder what would have happened if we fucking went to a war when you guys were making world war three memes. <sighs> Can you tell I'm a, I'm a bit, I'm a bit stressed. Yeah, me too. Um, so she she goes to the fucking hospital, bro, and this is the funniest shit. It's not it's not funny, but it's like what? She goes to the hospital and they're like, "Oh, we don't have enough tests here, so you definitely have the flu. If this kid had the flu, and if he's waiting for the test to come back, if it comes back corona, then you have corona." Fair point. I mean, but, you know, she's going to the hospital for some reassurance. You know, doctors are supposed to make you feel good and shit. So they don't have, Rhode Island currently doesn't have, like, enough uh, COVID-19 tests. And at that, they also don't have enough flu tests. But, you know. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is she's sick now. She's sick for, you know, the flu. And they told her to treat it like coronavirus. So they said uh, quarantine for 14 days. I have my daughter for two weeks. I don't just have her for half the week. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't just have her for half the week. I don't just have her for, you know, you know, half a day, one day, sleep over, half a day, one day, sleep, half a day, night off, whatever. I have her for two weeks straight. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been three days, and this kid does not fuck with me. And it's murder beef up in this crib right now. This kid is fighting with me over some crazy shit. And I'll tell you something. One thing that I love about having a daughter is that I feel like I am constantly learning about women. I am constantly um I'm constantly learning and and doing research on women through my kid because there's a lot of things that she does that you know, I, I learn about women about through can't talk right now. Like, you know, uh, and, and what women are a mystery and, and I'm not, I'm not shitting on them, but they're a mystery. We still got to, I mean, women will say that about men. I feel like, you know, like women will say that about men. They, you know, they have a lot to figure out and we do. Part of it is growing up and part of my growing up was having a kid, specifically a little girl. Women, you know, sometimes they're very, they're emotional. They don't really know sometimes why they're upset. Sometimes they don't know what the fuck they want. You got to figure that shit out. You got to play mind reader. You got to fucking play Superman. You got to fucking, you got to give them space or, or attack them head on or all at once. They want two of those things and you're just sitting there like, okay, I'm not going to do shit. And then they're like, they, they they hit you back with that later on. Like, oh, I kind of wish you did something. Well, how the fuck am I supposed to know? And that's how the fuck shit's been with my daughter right now, bro. This kid 
is like fighting with me over nothing. Nothing. I was on the fucking, I was on this side of the couch, right? Not making it. No, no, no. I was on this side of the couch, not making this up. I was on the left side of my couch. She's on the right side of my couch. She's, she takes over my TV. That goes without saying every time she's over, which means my TV is going to be taken over for the next two weeks. I'm going to have to fucking really, the kid has to be in a mood to watch a movie, right? So other than that, it's fucking cock sucking Ryan. The kid, the kid, let me not. It's the kid. I can't take that back and I don't edit my podcast. I said that I said that out of, you know, just being tired of watching this kid play with toys for the last three days. That was my fucking demon voice because I need Jesus. And that's what happens when you're locked in the house with a fucking toddler and you don't go anywhere. And you're just there and you're waiting to turn into fucking Jack Torrance from uh, The Shining. Dude, it's nonstop watching fucking Ryan, Ryan's world, whatever the fuck his name is, play with toys and, and do fucking Play-Doh reviews and fucking all this shit. And I'm going to run out to Walmart soon when it gets a little more calm and buy more shit. Believe it or not, this kid's got endless options in her room of shit to do, to play with, color, everything. It's always fucking Ryan. Ryan this. Daddy, can you put on Daddy Plato? Daddy. Excuse can you say please? You fucking ignorant piece of shit. Daddy, please, Plato. Daddy, baby alive. Baby alive reviews. Daddy. Daddy. Hey daddy. 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 Okay. LOL dolls. The fucking cock sucking little things that are like 15 bucks and they're like this big. Get the fuck out of here. You have like fucking 83 of them in your room, but you want to watch them on TV because you know that that's my shit. It's murder beef up in this bitch right now. It's murder beef. I'll, I'll fucking dude. I'll crack this kid. Honestly, I'll, cr- I'll crack her. And if you're taking this podcast seriously, I, I feel bad. Call DCYF, have them do an extent, an extensive, uh, 30 minute interview with Alexandria and ask her if how awesome her dad is. This is my outlet, dude. All right. I love my kid. I see her face and I want to punch every other kid in the face because they're not as fucking cute as her. You know what I'm saying? It's an unfair world. Deal with it. (sighs) Listen, the point I'm trying to make here is pay some fucking rent. If you're gonna if you're gonna be like that, if you're gonna fucking sit in my crib and talk your shit, pay some fucking rent. Daddy, at least pay the fucking Cox bill. Go fucking sling uh go sling masks right now. Go fucking ma- ma- do get creative. You know, chop up your little fucking construction paper and make some masks and go go stand outside. We're in Cranston. You know what I'm saying? It's not Providence where you're going to fucking, you might get shot on broad, dude. You're fucking too. Go out, go outside in Cranston, fucking sling some mask, bro. Cause I'm over it and pay for, pay for the cocks. If you want to take over my fucking TV. Daddy, daddy, daddy. That's the best too. Like when I, when I don't answer daddy and I'm like, Whoa. fuck man. I want to fucking spray Lysol down her th- <laughs> uh, I love my kid. You can only, you can, o- uh, this is so Kanye. You can, e- you can only love your kids so much to want to spray Lysol down their throat. You could, o- you could only love someone so much that you want to spray, you want to spray Lysol down their throat. Real shit, she knows what's going on, bro. She knows what's going on. She's picking fights with me. So what I was saying was I'm on this side of the couch. And she's on this side of the couch. And this is the type of fights she's picking with me now. That's how bored she is. Daddy in my spot. And I, you know, like I said, figuring out woman. I was figuring out women through her and her mom. Now I'm figuring out women through her. But like my point is that I was figuring out women and I was, and, and, you know, 
I use I used it a lot with her mother and I use it a lot now, right? So one of the things I learned is sometimes you just okay. All right. Switch. We'll switch. I'll go on the right side, you go on the left side. Daddy. Cool, calm, and collected. What's up, Alexandria? You're in my spine. That's how annoying it sounds at the moment. Like, she's cute as fuck, but I promise you, when it, when it goes through your ears, that's how it sounds. Like, I don't know how... It probably doesn't travel that slow, honestly, but, like, the, the way... Um, sound frequencies travel for a terrible two year old. That's what happens. Keep in mind, I'm yeah, I am, I am hibernating with a fucking terrible two year old right now. So, yep. So, <clears throat> I'll switch. You know, whatever. She's even arguing with toys. I'm not even touching. Like a toy will be fucking right here, dude. My phone cover. That's her toy. A toy will be right there, not touching it. My skin will graze it. Daddy, that's mine. Didn't even touch it. But that's mine. I know. I, I didn't touch it. Daddy, that's mine. Hey, hey. Fuck your fucking toy. You don't even want to play with the shits because you want to fucking watch Ryan. On my fucking 65-inch Samsung 4K TV where all I want to do is ingest movies through my asshole at this point because that's all you can fucking do when the coronavirus got you trapped in your crib. I don't even want to watch movies visually with my eyes anymore, bro. I want to ingest them through my asshole. Especially fucking Daniel Craig James Bond movies. They postponed them shits. I'm still mad about it. Are you still with me, ladies and gentlemen? You're not the only one going crazy. I, as usual, have the balls to say things that no one else has the balls to say. It's just our thoughts that I, I, I choose to spit out. And I'm here for you. Fuck this shit. I'm going nuts. I'm going to end up like Jack Torrance from The Shining, and I'm going to fuck, you know what I mean? I'm not going to kill her, but I'm going to scare her a little bit. I'm going to fucking take the axe to her door while she finally decides to play with her toys. And I'm going to be like, here's daddy. And she's not going to be scared because she's tapped. And I'll never tell her that. Just like you should never tell a woman she's crazy. If there's anything you should take home from this podcast today, ladies and gentlemen, never tell a woman she's crazy. I've stopped, I stopped doing that shit like fucking eight years ago. <sighs> Everything is canceled, dude. Everything is canceled. Sports got canceled. Just last week, you didn't think this shit was that serious. Then sports gets canceled. Fucking movies get canceled. My fucking show got canceled. I was doing a show with Cooj. I, I announced it last week. The flyer's coming soon. It'll have all the information on it. You can start pre-ordering tickets now if you want. But we don't have a, another, a new date for it yet. I mean, it might be the same date. The Comedy Clinic. I'm going to be at AS220. I'm, I'm running the shit with Cooj. And I'm on the shit. So I'm wearing, I'm, I'm wearing fucking, uh, what, what do they say? I'm wearing two, I don't know what the fucking saying is. I got two fucking gigs that night. I'm the fucking co-curator, showrunner, and, and I'm on the fucking show. All right? Because that's how you do shit. You want your, sh you, uh, you don't fucking go to, no offense, you don't go to fucking comedy. I do want to be, I want to, I want to do everything, but you don't go to comedy connection. You skip comedy connection and you do your own shit. <laughs> So the comedy clinic, AS220, was April 9th. AS220 was like, uh, I don't know. Might have to rain check on that. We'll let you know. So we don't know if it's April 9th yet, but the tickets are on sale. You let me know if you want to buy one, and that's it. My name is Jimmy. Also, shout out to Why Try for changing up the intro this week. He's forever going to be my guy. I'm always going to have him change it up and fucking just add a little to it. And that's it. It's very, that was very uh, COVID. I think that intro it was fitting for the times. Every other, you know, every other month is a fucking mood. Everything is canceled folks. Everything, everything is canceled. Oh, also that's not just my show. That's other comedian shows in the area too. I'm, that was very selfish of me. And I apologize. 
Woe's on there. My girl Bams is on there making her debut. My my guy Chris uh, Fratiello, he's a vet. Um, there's a there's quite a few guys. J- June is on there. I know a lot of you guys know June. It's a lot of uh, the whole point that I'm trying to do here is hopefully the first show succeeds, and we just keep doing more of this because I just want this to be an opportunity for different uh, comedians with what they want to bring to the table, what they want to, you know, what they want to bring in instead of the, I just feel like comedy clubs may, sometimes it may be limited to just like the old school punchline stuff. By the way, I have a Mai Tai candle here lit. Guess who's not getting any fucking quarantine pussy. This guy. And you know what? Hey, hey, what? It's all good. I lit the candle for myself. When I'm done with this podcast, shit might go down with my hand. But that's it. This is the shit. All right? That quarantine shit, I, it's very, it's funny. It's funny. It's all fun and games. It's another meme. Oh, there's going to be a lot of fucking, there's going to be a lot of quarantine fucking going on, man. Quarantine and chill. Quarantine and chill. Everything's about sex for you guys. Can't go a minute without thinking about it, huh? Can't go one fucking dirty minute. You dirty fucking pigs. You dirty fucks, you. Here's my shit. And this might be my OCD. This might be my fucking hypochondria. As I said last week, my shit's sick. My shit is sick. My shit's all over the place. And right now, it could very well be the worst time for fucking, for a hypochondria. It's definitely the worst time for a a hypochondriac. I've never seen shit to a point where, like, everything has to shut down and cancel. But, oh, boy, let me tell you, the idea of just having anyone come to my house right now and just, like, be all intimate when we're supposed to be practicing social distancing, it's a little sketchy. Not just because, it's not for my two-year-old. She'll live. And that, that is part of the murder beef. That kid, dude, that fucking kid hates me. I'm telling you right now. My daughter wants to kill me. I'm telling you. And, I, and I'm not saying that to justify what I think. I'm telling you she wants to kill me. I feel like she knows what's going on, too. Like, kids and animals know what's going on. My friend Angel was like, my, my cats know what's going on. My cats know what's going on, Jimmy. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And in my head, I'm like, dude, fuck cats. Fuck cats. I don't give a fuck about cats. You think that when I say animals know what's going on, I'm thinking about, meow. That happens all day, bro. They're just fucking annoying like that. They fucking pee in a box. They stink up your crib. They fucking, they think they're, they're you think they're smart because they're cleaning up after themselves, but then you got to sweep up the little droplets around the fucking thing after. Yeah. Get a dog, bro. You know what's you know what sounds more fucking dramatic and and believable than meow. <clears throat> those fucking those, those howls you hear at, at at midnight. If you hear your if you own a dog and you hear the dog howling at midnight, that means the world is ending. And my kid knows the world is ending. My kid knows. She's just like she she feels it and she's just sitting there. She's probably like. Daddy, I don't, I don't want the world to end, and and I just, she's probably just fucking bugging out right now. She's been given before her mom got sick when she was with her. She was giving her shit. She's giving me shit. She probably knows something's about to go down, bro. And you know what? She probably, she's probably just like, like she wants, she she just wants to feel safe. You know what I mean? And one day she's with dad. One day she's with mom. She's, you know, they're not together. You know what I mean? She probably wants the fucking ending of a, of a disaster movie. You ever watch the end of a disaster movie? The end, the fucking, the disaster movies are usually like the, 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 uh, the disaster movies are usually the, like when you get to, there's a part of every disaster movie, every single one, right? There's a part of every disaster movie. Where the father, the father and the mother are separated. The mom's got a new man. Every disaster movie. I'm not fucking playing. Fact check this shit. Watch 2012, Day After Tomorrow, fucking San Andreas, everything, dude. The mom and the dad in the disaster movies are never together. Ever. Right? The mom 
always has a fucking you man. The dad's a hardworking, whatever the fuck, limo driver, fucking firefighter, uh, whatever the fuck he is. And they're separated, right? And there's a part in the movie where something happens to mom's uh, new man or husband or whatever the fuck. He's either a dick or he, you know, when the going gets tough and the fucking coronavirus is out or the, the floods come in or whatever, the dude just pussies out and he's and the kids are like, what the fuck? It's probably my daughter right now. I'll be looking around and she's like, yo, there's no fucking toilet paper. What the fuck's going on? Why aren't mom and dad together? She's realizing it now. Why aren't mom and dad together? And that's when I'll have to talk with her one day. I'll be like, you know what, kid? What if I told you that me and your mom just made you to put a mixed kid out there? And this isn't going to be the end of the disaster movie that you want. Because your mom's man is a solid guy. So far. No, he is. And... Everything's going to be okay. You'll be fine. In Jesus' name. Everything is in Jesus' name, by the way. And uh, with Latin fucking, with, with uh, Latino and Hispanics families in Jesus' name. Yeah, everything's in Jesus' name. Okay. I think that's like, isn't that like part of blasphemy? I'm just going off on, ta- uh, on uh, tangents right now. Let's see. Let's talk about soap real quick. All right? Guys, Solita Soap is where art meets soap in a natural, organic way. Specializing in soap baskets and solution products like beard oil, rose water. And rose water. Wow. 100% of the soap products can be customized with its shape, colors, herbs, organic oils, types of soap, and fragrances. So your order is created by you. And they just put it together with a little TLC. If you want to make an order, make the order. Hit the link in my bio. Click on the fucking shaking Solita Soap tab. I have it shaking. I pay for that shit. And use promo code SINVERGUENZA at checkout for a nice little discount. My name is Jim. Jim. Everybody likes calling me Jim lately. It must be like serious times or something, huh? Hey, Jim, I want to talk to you about something. That's also the part of the um, the disaster movie where the scientists, for some reason, like the dad knows the scientists. Like, they're cool. So, I'll t- like, I'll tell Alexandria, like, we're in the part of the movie where she's got the flu. She doesn't know if it's fucking COVID-19. So the guy comes up to me. The, the, the guy that I know for some reason, I'm just like an average guy, like a firefighter, or a fucking limo driver. And the guy comes up to me, the scientist that I know for some reason, I know a fucking head scientist. And he's like, hey, Jimmy, she's definitely got it. No, no, no. He, for some reason, he's got an English at Jim, Jim. She's definitely got it, mate. She's definitely got it. And I just look at Alexis and I'm like, you got it. You fucking got it. And that's it. That's the movie. Because Alexandria doesn't get what the fuck she wants, bro. Fuck this kid. All right? I said it. You want to start shit, bro? You want to start shit? All right. (sighs) Ah. Yeah, everything's canceled, bro, and it sucks. My mom and dad are super fucking paranoid. They're more paranoid than I am right now. They, they've been checking on me for, like, since this thing hit the States. Yo, I'm surprised you're not uh, paranoid about the... Because I'm a hypochondriac, like I said. Every, every single time something has happened like this, like the... Like Ebola or H1N1, I'm always having a whole panic attack about it. And the funny thing is I had uh, the H1N1, the swine flu of 09. Swine of 09. I had that shit. And uh, I was on my ass. 
for a whole, it was like probably the worst thing I've ever gone through, like sickness wise. And the hype was real, you know? I just think that this is, I'm not, don't fucking laugh at people who are scared at it, guys, scared of it, guys, because whatever, you know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. Like, we, do I think that we should be paranoid? No. <laughs> I think that that's what's causing a lot of the the hysteria that's happening right now and, you know, the toilet paper shit. By the way, has has anyone noticed that toilet paper is sold out, right? But condoms are still on the shelf. Okay. Because I'm seeing a lot of, like I said earlier, I'm seeing a lot of freaky shit. A lot of, let's quarantine up together, baby. Baby. Let's quarantine up. I'm horny. I haven't fucked in a few days because COVID-19. Get fucking condoms. You can't wrap tissue around your dick. You can't fucking, you know, seal tissue in your vag and hope that, you know, when the dude fucking goes in you, whatever. Because I guarantee you, if you're quarantining up for a couple of days, that you know, it's math, dude. It's math. You fucking quarantine up for a few days. You guys fuck quite a few times. You know, there's going to be one time when the dude's like, didn't make it out in time. Guess what? I shot a couple of soldiers in you. And now baby on the way, gender reveal in a few months, a few weeks now, actually. A lot of COVID-19 babies. Yeah, I don't, I don't want another one right now. This fucking whole experience. And again, I love my kid. I'm joking. I am. I'm letting out a little frustration, but I'm joking. Mostly. This little experience is making me want to get a vasectomy, honestly. Like my kid wants to kill me. I'm telling you right now. She wants her parent. She wants it. She wants it to be a, a nice little cute disaster movie. She wants her parents to get back together. She wants her mom's new man to be a piece of shit. And uh, it sucks because that's not life. You know what I mean? Sometimes you have to sit at home and fucking and argue with your dad over nothing all day. Fuck. Guys, it's a nice change of pace. Usually I'm talking about dick and pussy on this. So. Give my daughter some love and this fucking virus that sounds like teen porn. Yeah, my parents... They were, they're very surprised that I'm not, like, going through it right now. And I'm just like, dude, this is the one virus that I think I'm not worried about. Yeah, we should we should take it serious. We should take precaution. We shouldn't go on on St. Patty's Day. Yeah, that's fine. But I'm not going to bug about it. Like, if I get sick, I get sick. It's fine. Nobody likes being sick in general, but fuck. <sighs> wow, very classy, Jimbo. I love how they're reporting. They're reporting like every celebrity and every uh, athlete like it's AIDS. Like the fucking. (laughs) The motherfucking literally like every single time I see a celebrity or an athlete reported, it's like they're reporting it like if they got AIDS. Like it's like, oh, this just in. That's the funniest part. The intro. This just in. Tom Hanks. Has contracted, and I swear to God, I saw contracted. Tom Hanks has contracted COVID nineteen or the coronavirus, and it's like, oh, he like it sound if if you didn't know what the what the thing was, you would have thought it was another word for AIDS. Which, by the way, they fucking cured HIV like twice in the last month. And we didn't know about it because we're so fuck we're bugging about uh the coronavirus and toilet paper. So there's that. Yo, and uh I joke about the apocalypse and shit and and, and it does it it does uh it does feel very apocalyptic. I don't like this way of living. It 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 fe- the, the the shutdown thing is what makes it feel like an apocalypse. The shutdown, the cancel it's having to stay at home, can't go outside. When you do go outside, it looks like a ghost town. So you feel you feel very uncomfortable. It feels very apocalyptic. But if you guys really think that this is the apocalypse, like I went on a tangent last night and I was like bugging out and I was like, dude, my boy Nino hit me up. 
fucking scumbag, by the way. Fuck you, Nino. Hits me up, and he's like, yo, did you realize how many fucking CEOs fucking stepped down from their jobs in the past month, bro? What the fuck do they know? And I'm like, bro, really? I'll fuck you up. Hey, hey. It was like 9 o'clock at night, and he's texting me this shit. He knows I have anxiety. He has anxiety, too. But he knows I have anxiety, and he's like, he be, he's, his attitude is basically, oh, if you're going to have anxiety, I'm going to have anxiety. So guess what I found out, bro? CEOs stepped down in the last couple months. Why? Don't know. What do they know? Don't know. But it's got to be something. Guess what, bro? Suck my dick. Hey, hey. Why would you tell a friend that? That they, you know has, has like fucking bugs out about shit. So I went on a little tangent for a little bit, but then I calmed down and I was like, you know what? It's just virus. This shit happens every couple of years, whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? If you really think that this is like the apocalypse that we're currently in the apocalypse right now, the apocalypse cannot be this boring. Like we're, the apocalypse is not going it, to, it's a little, it's boring. I don't mean it like disrespect it. I need to put a little more respect on it, but it's a little boring for an apocalypse. Don't you think like fucking staying inside, bro? Staying inside? Yeah, no, the apocalypse... I, I, I figured that the apocalypse was me fucking staying inside, getting a switch, catching Pokemon, beating my meat when my... Do- you know, once I put my daughter to bed, obviously. Beating my meat and then fucking going to bed. That's what I thought the apocalypse would be, just like around the clock for fucking two weeks. Yeah. No, the apocalypse is like aliens or zombies or fucking G- Jesus like cracking out of the sky and... And finally coming to slay like 80,000 demons that have been like roaming the earth and fucking us up. That's what I pictured to you. But maybe, maybe I'm like fucking over like, maybe I'm expecting too much. But like the apocalypse cannot be this boring. So let's, let's let that idea go right now. <clears throat> Back to the toilet paper thing. We're buying mad toilet paper with no condoms. And all of you freaky fucks are like quarantined up with my boo. With, with, who wants to get quarantined up? And I'm not going to lie. It's been entertained a few times, but I haven't fully been comfortable with like, yo, come through. I haven't fully been comfortable with like, yeah, yo, let's get it on. Let's get it on. Because you never know. You never know. And it's hilarious <laughs> because all this toilet paper is sold out and the condoms are sitting on the shelves. Y'all are dirty, first of all. Or you don't give a fuck and you're just going to make your quarantine babies. You know that there's going to be mad quarantine babies from this shit. Guaranteed. Everyone's buying the toilet paper, but not the condoms. Everybody's got it all ass backwards, in my opinion. This is this is my shit, right? Didn't even have to go out to get fucking disinfectant or clean or any type of like cleaner or, or uh, sanitizer or whatever. Because every fucking I'm burping up IPAs. Every time that my mom comes out here, I go to New York. She's got this like fucking forty pound bag of shit that I'm always like, Mom, why? And let me tell you guys something, right? And I'm not, I'm not gonna, put, I'm not trying to put my mom on blast, but she be hitting licks. My mom's gonna hear this podcast and be like, "What is licks?" And none of you are gonna tell her because I don't want her to know that I'm putting her on blast. Anyway, I'll be hitting licks, and she hits licks, and you know sometimes I hit licks, and you know sometimes you don't fucking scan everything. And that's why when you go to enough times, you stop going and you go to Target instead. Not everything gets self-checkout. So that's what happens. My mom just comes through with mad shit and she's like, here you go. And it's bullshit that I don't even look at and I tuck away. And then when an apocalyptic thing like the coronavirus happens, I look at my fucking... uh, She also brings it. I also have like 80,000 suitcases for like whenever I travel. Because she always brings it in a suitcase. Mad Lysol, bro. 
I got the fucking Power Rangers of Lysol thanks to thanks to my mother. Go go Power Rangers. I got the fucking Citrus Meadow scent. Mm. I could just inhale that right now. Whenever motherfuckers want to make fucking beer jokes. I got the uh spring waterfall scent. Thank you, Mom. Uh, I'm spraying them all, yes. Disinfecting my house, yes. Early morning breeze scent. <laughs> yeah, I definitely breathe that in. Oh. Oh. And I and I sprayed that one because I'm a fucking crackhead. Low key. And then I got the Lysol all purpose cleaner with the lemon breeze scent. You know what I'm saying? I cleaned this table that I'm podcasting on before this shit. I had a visitor for like fucking five minutes. Guess what? Still got to take precautionary action. I didn't have to go out, bro, because of this, because my mom got me all set. And I had a little bit of a panic attack last night, and I told my mom, I said, yo, can you dead ass come stay with me for a fucking couple weeks? So this shit blows over. You know what she said to me? My mom's the sweetest fucking dude. There is no bitch sweeter than my mom, bro. It. Let me tell you something, man. And I didn't even reply this. How much of a fucking cock I am. I should. I'm going to reply right now. I'm a little better. But I still. Want you. So she fucking, I texted her. I said, yo, mom, come stay with me until this blows over, please. I'm scared. I'll pay for the bus. Let me know. Answer me when you can, please. I'm being dead ass. She goes, hi, son. How are you? I am good. What are you? That, she loves doing that, by the way. Whenever I'm like, I hit her up and I'm like, hi, I'm not like, how you doing? She goes, I am good. I am good. What are you talking about? Scared of what? I said, I feel like the world's going to end. And she goes, don't worry, baby. I'm going to come home. I promise everything is going to be okay. Don't watch the news. And she's like, what happened? She calls me. She's like, what the fuck are you bugging out about? And instead of like trying to calm me down, she's like, ooh, what are you talking about? And she tells me to send her the articles, and it's about the CEO stepping down. So that's my mom, folks. Trying to help out, but she's also very curious. She's also the first one who, like, a week ago was like, there's something deeper going on. And I'm like, Mom, shut the fuck up. Because I don't need to hear this shit. I need you to be the the woman that I know who, like, you know, if I wake up at night, in the middle of the night. The funny thing about my mom is that when I was a kid, she was very like, fuck off. And that's probably where I get it from. Like, I don't tell my, she didn't tell me to fuck off and I'll tell my kids to fuck off, but the attitude is very similar. Like, I would wake up in the middle of the night after watching, like, Exorcist that I shouldn't have watched a, a week and a half earlier. I'm like, Mom, I see Linda Blair in the corner of my room crawling up the fucking hallway, like, with her fucking back toward or whatever. Mira, muchacho de la mierda, coño. Translated in English. Basically, piece of shit kid. That's what she would say to me. And then she'd tell me to go back to bed. Like, okay, mom. Now, you would think that she she would treat me, like the way she treats me now, she would treat me that way when I was five. But now she treats me like the way she should have treated me when I was five. she, She treats me like that now. Oh, my son, yes, I'll go over there. If you need me to go over there, I'll go stay with you for a few weeks because you're fucking 26 and you can't handle some fear. Yep. Very ass backwards. (sighs) Real quick, though. Okay. Real, real, real fucking quick. Where is this right now? God, I got so much stand-up ready for this show that I have to go through all of it to get to my notes for to the to the ads. All right. 
Guys, as you may know, I have partnered with Autism Speaks and Facebook streamer one and only underscore Rhino for his first ever charity event, Streamathon for Autism. Rhino will be conducting a 12-hour stream on April 11th starting at 2 p.m. and ending April 12th at 2 a.m. What do you know? We might be in quarantine. He will be playing Apex Legends and chatting with viewers on Facebook Live and Twitch. He will also be playing with interested followers and supporters that day, too. Make sure to stop in the chat and drop a donation. He is setting the starting goal at $500. However, we are expecting more than $500 because it's for a good cause and we're not fucking cheap. You want to go in? Go all in. Me and Rhino believe video games provide a perfect opportunity for people with autism to connect with their peers. It's a common ground we can all get behind, so please get behind us on April 9th and let's raise some money for autism. Go follow his Facebook page at one and only underscore Rhino for more information in the future. A donation link will be available the day of the event. That will directly put money in the pockets of Autism Speaks. And that is awesome. (laughs) That is awesome. All right. The fucking Corona. I'm over the Corona. It's fucking up my way of life. It's fucking up my way of living. And it's making my child want to kill me. I'm minding my business, dude. I really am. I'm right. I'm minding my business. I'm staying on my end of the couch. I got it. Like I said, I traded in my PS4 for a switch. So if I can't play it on my fucking TV, I'm catching Pokemon in the corner on the screen. And she's just looking at me and she's just, it's just literally like, it's like daddy. But in her head, she's like, how the fuck can I fuck with this prick today? You know what I mean? I dude, I've got all the fucking food in the world, bro. I went to target. And that's how I feel about that. But I went to Target and I got all the fucking junk food in the world. Why? Because that's what the kids want. That's what the kiddos want. Usually I'm like, yo, let's eat good. Wake up in the morning, have some egg whites, some oatmeal. She'll eat it with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I teach my kid how to eat good. And I balance it out in the afternoon. I'll give her some chicky nuggies. But. I got all the junk food in the world. She's eating everything in sight. She's fucking taking over my TV. She's bouncing off the walls. She's fucking crying, and she doesn't even know why she's crying, which is why I said I'm learning about women more and more every day because sometimes they don't know what the fuck's wrong. They don't know what they want. You women don't know what you want, and it's not a fucking brand new thing. I just don't know why I randomly turned that into a Migo song. But it's so true. But my daughter's teaching me, and I love that kid for that. I, I love her. I love her to death. I love her to death. Empis, empathy. Em- <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Oh, God. I hope you empathize with me right now. Because it's, it's getting rough out here, ladies and gents. I had one more thing in my notes, but I think that this might be where I leave it. This might be where I leave it. This is the fucking tangent on Corona that people needed to hear to know that they're not alone in the insanity in the, in the fucking COVID-19 insanity. All right. I have not stepped out of my house. I am probably gaining the weight that I lost back. And it's all good. You fucking pricks who are at the gym like, I need to go. They're not shutting my shit down. I got an email from LA Fitness. They were closing. Good idea because gyms are fucking gross. You know how many niggas are fucking picking their assholes and picking their nose and fucking doing this whole thing while looking at fucking 16-year-old girls and shit? And they don't wash their hands and they're just fucking... They're at their fucking hands in their asshole and and in their fucking ball sack and then touching their nose and their eyes and their fucking mouth. All the fucking old fucks from fucking Johnston, the old Italian dudes. That don't care and sit in the sauna with their ball sack out. All right. 
The point is, if I gain the weight back, who cares? I'll worry about it the day I get back in the gym. But for right now, I'm going to eat all of the bullshit with my daughter because that is when she is the happiest. And when she's the happiest, I'm the happiest. When she's miserable, guess what? I'm going to give it right back. And until then, it's murder beef. All right, guys, enjoy your week. Don't go too crazy. If you don't fucking want to go to work, don't go to fucking work. Fuck your boss, bro. If you don't feel safe, fuck it. That's one thing I'll say about this shit. Don't cancel just some shit and not everything. Cancel everything. But, you know, yeah, some people got to go to work. For the people listening on the road, wash your hands, be safe, keep it clean, stay healthy. For the people listening in an office, wash your hands. Keep it clean. If you got that fucking, that, that side nigga or bitch that you fuck in the office, use a condom. You shouldn't have blown your butt, your money on all the fucking toilet paper. Okay. Um, if you're off and you're quarantined up with somebody, dude, remember to pull out Matt. It's, it's simple math. The more you fuck somebody, you know, yeah, you don't want to use a condom and you think that you're Mr. You know, you don't miss or whatever, but guess what? And girls, that dude's going to nut in you, okay? That dude, that dude's going to slip up. It's simple mathematics. You fuck a couple times when you're cooped up, he's just going to let one off. And then you, got, you guys will be living a quiet place. Where, where, you know, you think we're in the apocalypse? You want to have a baby right now through this shit? We'll be living in a quiet place. You're going to have a fucking screaming kid while you got all these coronavirus monsters running around. All right? All right. I'm going to leave it at that. We'll be back next week for episode 35 if we all don't die. I think we won't. I think we'll be fine. And until then, guys, rubber it up. Stop fucking buying the toilet paper. Go look at some Magnum, some Fire and Ice. Maybe not those because those make you feel like you got Vicks on your dick. At one time I used them and I thought that they would work. No. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. And once again, I will see you next week. My name is Jimmy.